Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again and today I again have to talk about Thüringen. Things are still developing there and news come in very fast now and I see it a little bit as my responsibility as many of you guys tell me that I am your first source for news out of Germany. So I see it as my responsibility to actually tell you what's going on and follow up on these stories that I started reporting on on my channel. So in this video I want to tell you what has been going on in Thüringen since yesterday. I told you that many people, many powerful people from German leftist parties, they demanded people to step back and they are very angry and very unsatisfied with the way that the MPs in the parliament in Erfurt voted. Angela Merkel demanded this vote to be declared null and void and for Mr. Kemmerich to step back as the governor of Thüringen and the parliament needs to be dissolved and the election needs to be repeated because they dared to vote for someone who is not a communist. So far these were only demands, this was only pressure that was being built up, but now we actually see that there are real consequences. And not just for Mr. Kemmerich, but for other people as well. So I will give you the facts first and then my opinion and my thoughts on the topic on a larger scale in the second half. But before we begin, I briefly want to thank all my subscribers and my supporters. If you like my content, like and share my videos and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also consider making a donation via PayPal or supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar if you wanna support my work. So I told you in my last video that Mr. Kemmerich from the uh, Liberal Party, the FDP, um, received an ultimatum from left-wing parties that he should step back until Sunday. And uh, at first he said that he doesn't want to step back right away. He accepted that he will not stay MP for very long. Uh, he said that uh, there should be new elections for a new governor or the parliament must be dissolved. He just didn't want to step back from office right away. But that was of course not good enough. Just saying that you want a new election for the governor or to dissolve the parliament, that is not good enough. They wanted to see his head on a silver platter right now. So even before Sunday, today on Saturday, he declared that he will step back from his office and that he would even give back all the money that he is legally entitled to as he was elected governor. He will give back to the state. So this man is completely broken. He completely collapsed, which is understandable. If you watch my last video, um, then you know how he was treated and what kind of threats have been made against him. He is really fighting for his survival in Germany right now. He might not be able to even live or do business here anymore in the future as things are standing now. And also the leader of his liberal party um, was put under pressure. Christian Lindner who just came to Erfurt in order to convince him to step back, he also had to endure a vote of confidence within his own party. He was reprimanded and he was given a warning but he can't stay in power as the leader of the Liberal Democrats. If you watch the interview he gave and see how he acts and how he talks in front of the camera, you almost think that he is shaking with fear when he apologizes to other politicians and to the German public for not being loyal enough to Angela Merkel and not being decisive enough in his fight against people who stand against communism in Germany. That opposing a communist governor is an unforgivable sin. So he is weakened and warned but yet in power. Well he doesn't really have any power anymore, he's just um, at the lead of his party. But he doesn't have any real power anymore after this if you ask me. This is for the time being as far as the Liberal Party goes, what about Angela Merkel's Conservative Party? As you know, the CDU also voted for Mr. Kemmerich and they have to be punished now. So I want to start with a guy that I didn't even know before. He is the commissioner of the federal government of Germany for Eastern German Affairs. That means he takes care of questions, problems and needs that are special to Eastern Germany. Remember, the reunification was only taking place in 1990. And he is something like a lobbyist for Eastern Germany with the federal government here. 
Now he's from the CDU and as such he is traditionally of course anti-communist. So he saw it as a positive thing that um, not the communist guy won, but that the new governor of Thüringen after such a long time of socialist rule would be someone from the Liberal Party. So he tweeted and expressed his congratulations to Mr. Kemmerich in this tweet. After a short conversation with Angela Merkel, who declared that it is no longer possible for him to hold this office after speaking out against communism, he lost his position. Bear in mind that he didn't even praise the AFD or expressed some patriotic nationalist feeling. No, he congratulated a liberal candidate. So if you want to frame it that way, that he applauded the AFD or something, that is a complete lie. That is just not true. He didn't do that. Mr. Kammerich was not the AFD candidate. He's a liberal guy. He doesn't even like the AFD. He is not even a patriot. But just speaking out against a communist candidate is already enough so that the Chancellor Angela Merkel herself intervenes and kicks you out. And then what about Mr. Mike Moring, the leader, or should I say former leader, of the CDU in Thüringen? Now this story is very worrisome actually and very fishy. Because first the faction of the CDU in the Landtag, in the regional state parliament in Thüringen, was actually backing him up and standing behind him. And what I read in the articles then about a meeting that they have to discuss the current situation They startled me quite a bit because it is so fishy and unusual what I read there. There was no vote of confidence, nobody really voted him out, but they said that the general appearance or the generally perceived opinion was very much against him, so um, he stepped back. That doesn't sound like a clean process, this sounds really fishy to me. And the reason for that, the reason why his party friends in Thüringen from the CDU were all of a sudden against him and didn't support him anymore in this situation was the following. They accused him of not telling them before the election of Mr. Kemmerich that Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer, the leader of the CDU, was not supporting this step. Think about this for a couple of seconds. Think about the CDU MPs in the Landtag in Erfurt who voted for Mr. Kemmerich because they thought it is a good idea to have a governor that is not a far-left communist but a liberal guy instead from the center of the political spectrum. And now that they're apparently told that um, the higher-ups in their party did not support this step, now of a sudden they're outraged and, oh, we were tricked. We would never have voted for a guy from the center if we had known that our party elite doesn't agree with that. Think about how conformist and how conditioned they are. They can't even think for themselves. They have no ideological or moral basis. They have no belief system of their own. They don't even have their own thoughts. They just slavishly do everything that the higher-ups in the party demand them to do. So they feel betrayed by Mr. Moring for not clearly telling them what AKK wants of them. So before every vote that they take in parliament, they need detailed instructions from the party elites to tell them precisely what is in the favor of their party leadership and what will bring them ahead. What is the right opinion to have and the right guy to support. And if you don't specifically write that down for them in a memo, then they just don't know what to do. Seriously, who needs a party like that anymore? This is ridiculous. And just the information that AKK was against this step in a federalist country, mind you, that is enough for them to feel betrayed and to stop supporting Mr. Moring. So I don't know if that is really true, but that is what the newspapers write, at least in Germany right now. Okay, so this is what I could extract from the German media about the current purge that is going on in Germany. And now let me take this a little bit further. Our corporate and state media are at the moment amplifying voices that start saying that the CDU should start cooperating with the very far left communist party Die Linke. By the way, all these people that are excluded from the party now and that are losing their offices, they are experiencing that because something that is written in the CDU party statutes. 
it says that if you do something that goes against the common ideology or the basic convictions and beliefs of the party, um, that this can get you in trouble in this way. And there is in fact a decision of the federal party, CDU, to not cooperate in a meaningful, tangible way with either the AFD or with the far-left party, Die Linke. So if you cooperate with any of those parties and you can argue whether or not Mr. Uh, Moring actually did that just because he voted for the same liberal candidate as them, I don't think this is a clear cooperation, but whatever. So if you would cooperate with them, like forming a coalition with them or working together with them in any way, then this can be a cause for getting you in trouble in the CDU. And there are voices that are getting louder now that say, oh, the AFD is of course still um, forbidden fruit, but what about the Socialist Party Die Linke? Shouldn't we work together with them instead? And I can understand the motivation from a very basic consideration that the CDU doesn't really have any options for power anymore right now because they are too weak to rule themselves. They can only rule in a grand coalition with the SPD like they do at the moment on the federal level. But the SPD and the Green Party, they don't really have any problems or any shyness about working together with the party Die Linke. But of course, they do not want to work with the AFD, obviously. That means they only exclude a coalition to the right, but to the left, they're wide open. And the CDU positioned itself in the center and said, we will not cooperate with left-winged or right-winged extremes on the political spectrum. So their only possible coalition partners are the um, SPD, the Green Party and the Liberal Party. And that puts them at a significant strategical disadvantage, especially when you see that um, those three parties in several states and the Liberal Party actually all around Germany and on the federal level are extremely weak. So what they are pushing for, and Angela Merkel is pushing for that like nobody else, is that there is a unified bloc against the AFD, as you all know, All parties should be allowed to work together with each other. It doesn't matter how crazy and radical some of their people are. Um, many, many extreme leftists. But that doesn't bother them as long as the AFD stays isolated. So that means the transformation of the CDU is in full progress. First, in recent decades, it was transformed from an conservative party into a social democratic centrist almost progressive party of the middle that doesn't have any true German conservative values left and now it is actually transformed from the middle to a far left socialist communist party believe it or not which makes sense of course if you know where Angela Merkel is coming from so and now towards the end I want to make an even wider comment about the situation that we have in Germany not right now but for decades already in a way I have to say we have to be thankful to the AFD for this experiment that they performed in Erfurt because it reveals the situation or the conditions under which Germans are living for decades already. I was taught civics in school. That means how does our society work? How does our democratic political process work? How is the state uh, built up and where does power come from? I was told, of course, that the power comes from the people. And even though there is no direct democracy, we elect parliaments in our indirect democracy and those parliamentarians then are actually voting in our stead but um, they should um, have our interests and our will in mind when they do so. That is of course a complete lie as you can see now but for as long as nobody goes against the common ideology and no one breaks the unwritten rules because let me tell you they kept the written rules, the actual rules, the official rules that we have, they didn't violate any of those rules. They just violated the unwritten rules. And this is um, to follow the ideology of the leader. That means communism and socialism. But as long as nobody goes against that, really, you don't really see what the actual underlying power structure is. The power does not come from the people. The power is not transferred via elections on parliamentarians. This is all revealed very clearly for everyone who has two eyes to see it. As soon as you vote for the wrong party, you're declared an outlaw. As soon as you, as an elected member of a state parliament, votes for the wrong candidate as governor, you are declared an outlaw. And there is no democratic process, there is no official 
legal process that ended these guys' careers. It was just bullying and pressuring. The bullying and the pressure came from the top. That means from very, very powerful people from within their own parties. It came from the media and it also came from the streets. As the head of the Green Party faction in the Landtag in Erfurt, Mr. Dirk Adams actually openly admits. He said that Kemmerich was forced to resign because of pressure from the street. We're talking about mob rule here. And I have to admit that Even me, myself, I'm a little bit surprised about how far they're going and how blatantly they are violating all these principles that they told us for decades are so sacred in our society. I'm not shocked about the fact that they want to do these things. I'm shocked about the fact that they do them right now already in such an overt manner. But as I said, this will have enormous consequences for Germany. Many people are finally waking up now. Many people are getting uncomfortable that have been sound asleep until now. And everyone should notice by now that there is no rule of law, there is no real democracy in Germany. If you go against socialism, if you go against the globalist elites, votes will be declared null and void. People are losing their offices that were properly and democratically elected into those offices. And the shock troops of Merkel's regime, the street thugs that she supports, they can target you and your family and the police just looks away. This is of course a big black pill. It is scary and frightening, but it is also a big red pill. Because this illuminating experiment showed to everyone openly what is going on in our society in Germany. And that what we were told in school, in our civics class, was a complete lie. Because what is democracy really? I mean, democracy doesn't mean that there are just elections. You also need a certain amount of pluralism, because if you don't allow other opinions and ideologies, what's the point of voting? And the most important thing about democracy, however, I think is, is the peaceful and orderly transfer of power in case the other side is elected. And that means a good Democrat would actually acknowledge that he has lost and that the other guys had more votes and then step back. This is not happening, however. As this shows very clearly, this is not happening at all. If internationalist NGOs and our state media and our party elites don't agree with an election, then it just didn't happen and it has to be repeated. So this is as far as my update from Germany goes for today and uh, what I think about these events. Let me know what you think about this affair in the comments below and stay safe wherever you are. Servus Kameraden!